This is the future. Is the future. Hi guys, so I have a product here that believe it or not is not on YouTube. I wanted to check a review for this product on YouTube and there is absolutely nothing, nada, zip, not on the name, not on the model number, nothing. So I thought, well, let me be the first. Now this is one of those China cash and carry specials. This charger is only costing me 450 Rand. And compared to your more professional chargers, it's going to cost anything from 1000 up to 1900 Rand for doing exactly the same thing that this charger is doing. And then those chargers are only a 4 amp or a 6 amp charger where I got this one it's a 30 amp charger 12 volt for 450 and yes it probably doesn't have a warranty the other ones has got a 4 to 5 year warranty so a lot of people's probably probably going to give me flack for this but this thing is so cheap that if it breaks tomorrow I go buy a new one you see and I needed a charger now today I couldn't wait another day or another two days to go look for a charger that is uh, <laughs> got a five year warranty or whatever. So let us check this GP shit out and see if it works. If you just need something to charge your car battery and get it going when you need to, why do you want to spend 2000 bucks for it? So let's see what this charger can do. Okay, the person who wrote this wrote really stupid because it seems like he doesn't know English. But anyway, it has an integrated circuit development, so you can put it positive by negative, negative by positive, and it won't damage the unit, so you can cross it if you uh, don't know how to do it properly in the first place. Uh, it's used for battery charging. Once the battery is full, it automatically go into a floating state. Um, it's got an output meter, pulse charging of battery, and uh, so the battery won't overcharge. And it increases the discharge capacity at service life of the battery. That's it. That's what's in the box. It's not very heavy. It's extremely lightweight. It uh, is very plasticky. But what did you expect from a cheap China shop? Um, probably that's your probably your, your charging light and your full light. There's your battery clamps and there's your power. Um, so since it doesn't have all kinds of buttons and lights to show you what it's doing, you probably have to believe that it switches over to um, floating state. There is absolutely no manual or paperwork that comes with it. Uh, so let's see what it says here. This was just the closest that you're going to get to a user manual. It's just some do's and don'ts on how to use the clips. Let's give it a chance and see how long it's going to take to charge the BM's battery. Hi guys! So the time has finally arrived. And it's time to strip the BM. So a lot of stuff has happened to prepare for this. I had to get a couple of chemicals. Um, I had to buy the diagnostic species to make sure that all the error codes can be cleared after the repairs. And also to see what errors there are. And uh, so far I have fixed the rim. The one mag that I have. That one over there. Uh, I hit a pothole a few months ago and it cracked on the inside. So I took it in to this guy who uh, quickly, man I'm telling but quick, I took it in yesterday afternoon at 2, I got it back this morning just after 9. He welded the whole thing up for me, he respray painted it for me and he inflated it for me and he guarantees this thing is 100% correct. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this wheel on the back and put the other back one at the front and take the spare wheel off um, because it was it was on the front. So but I don't want to put the cracked ones in front. 
So that's the first thing we're going to do to get this BMW ready for stripping. And uh, also, the battery is flat because you know BM, when it stands, there's still electronics running in the background draining the batteries. And if you don't start this car at least once a day, it goes down. Now this is just to show you guys the nice job that he've done. This is where the crack was. So he welded this entire crack up for me and he resprayed it bam, black for me again. Awesome. This is so typical. How many of you can relate to this? Drop me a comment and let me know where you have to first fix the equipment before you can actually start doing the job. So I want to put on the battery charger to charge the battery and what do I find? The plug fell off. The plug fell off. How the fuck does shit like that happen to me? I think I've got gremlins. I've got real gremlins running around in the house somewhere. So now I first have to reattach the plug to get electricity to the charger. Okay, a quick how-to. How to put an electrical cable on a plug. I'm sure everyone knows that. But quick reference. Did you know that some of the plugs are not color-coded or they are not marked? Now everyone knows green goes to the top because green is earth. Now me, I'm colorblind. And I always get confused about which is live and which is neutral. I think live was blue and neutral is brown. I, I'm not sure. I'm always confused with that. But I do know where they go. And the way to know that is if it's not written on the plug, blue and brown. You can also look at it this way. Brown, BR, bottom, right. Blue, bottom, left. Okay. There's a quick tip for you guys. Okay, there we go. Blue, brown, green. Done. Okay, to test the battery, let's go and see. As you guys can see, 11.4 volt. That's what's on the battery now. To show you that the battery is really dead, I'm going to try and start the car. As you guys can see, it's more dead. It's dead as a door now. So uh, let us test. The time now is 1 uh, 13.26. Okay. We're going to put up the battery charger now. And then we're going to see how long it's going to take um, for this uh, battery to charge up to 13 volt or enough to start the car. Okay. So I'm ready to charge a battery. So let's put the negative on the negative. And the positive on the positive. Make sure nothing else touches anything. And let's plug her in. So we've got the positive on there, negative on there, charger here. And uh, let's plug her in and see if she charges. Probably can't you probably can't see this, but the red light and the green light is on. So there is power on the unit and the fan is blowing. So this unit is definitely working. Okay guys, um, you are not going to believe this shit. So I took out the jack and the spanner because I want to take this wheel off, put the repaired one at the back and put this one in front to put back the spare wheel. And as my wonderful luck will have it the moment i opened up this the special nut that goes onto your special bolt which is this one fell in behind the battery isn't that nice so i've got this little magnetic tip but it does not pick up that nut so you know what that means i have to take out the battery to get the bolt. If it's going to start like this, I'm going to have a very bad week. But as not to interrupt the charging, we will keep the charger on while we remove the battery. Something that I've learned uh, when I was doing my Appyship many, many, many years ago 
was that when you charge a battery you have to open up the cells so that when it starts boiling inside it doesn't swell up the battery and the battery can't explode so uh, at the same time I'm just checking to see if all the plates are covered with electric fuel or electric li liquid um, electrolyte what's, what's just the proper name anyway I see uh, they're bubbling all of them so that means all the cells are charging and uh, definitely all the plates are covered with the liquid so um, I was afraid of this uh, I was afraid of this here so I'm just gonna take some uh, water when I'm finished and wash it off and then we'll keep an eye on that just make sure that this thing isn't leaking acid okay guys so I washed the mag this is the repaired one I've placed it on the back but I have unfortunately noticed that the guy took the weights off the ones that goes there he took them off to be able to weld the rim so this wheel is not balanced I'm gonna have to take it for wheel balancing as soon as the car is back up and running and then uh, I washed this rim this one is the one that was on the back side that side and here is the spare okay so unfortunately it took a bit longer than I thought it's been uh, uh, more than an hour hour and a half to do that so this battery is charging from what did we say 20 plus 1 so uh, I'm going to close it up now put it back okay guys it's been an hour and a half the battery was on charge and let's see how full it is or how empty it is hey 12.3 it's not bad can we see if we can start it? Let's try. Awesome guys, it started like the first time. So that's all I needed was a charger and start the car within an hour, hour and a half and not wait a full bloody six hours or three days just to get the car started. Happiness, man. Um, while we had the car started and going, Let's plug in the diagnostic computer and see what it tells me about the system since there's actually electricity running through the system now. Okay, first of all, now that the car is idling, I want to see if the alternator is in fact charging. 13.6. Let's see what the rest of the system says. Let's erase the previously stored information so we can start a brand new one okay codes found too so still the same two from uh, unit 12 and unit 18 let's see okay it's the same code about the alternator this code means that the alternator output is too low so I'm gonna have to go and replace the regulator or something on the alternator to fix this problem okay let's see what What's the second code? 1720 Okay, I must remember this one. I will look it up because this is a beam specific error code. So I will um, see what that is. So here is the error code explanation guys. It says that the manifold tuning valve is stuck open. So I am going to take off the air intake anyway and see if I can either repair or replace this valve. Now it says if this valve stays open, it does cause performance issues on high and low revolutions. So that's probably why the car is not pulling the way it should. Unfortunately, I still have to take off the head because the head gasket did get damaged. Well, that's all for now guys. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can get notified of the next repair video. Until next time, whatever you're doing guys, keep it safe. Cheers. Hey guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Give me a thumbs up because it will really help out this channel. And feel free to drop a comment. Then something new for you all, there's now a Facebook page, so feel free to follow me on my Facebook group. We will be discussing behind the scene features and videos that I have done also. Don't forget to go to my website 
at www.cryptzone.co.za. We can go straight to my podcast if you want to. By clicking on the podcast icon, you'll be sta- taken straight to the Anchor podcast page where I do my podcast. And remember, when you go to my YouTube page, there will be a place where you can subscribe to my channel. Um, and remember, if you have any comments, please feel free to drop me an email. And on my YouTube front page, there is now a PayPal donation button where you can feel free to donate to this channel to help it grow and to help to support me. Thanks for watching and until next time, cheers.